Okay, I'm packing up for the machine shop for, to, to get the uh, engine bits balanced. And I've got on my uh, left to right, I've got everything that's involved. I've got my, uh, my fan and my extender, but I'm not going to go with those. I'm going to go with a patent machine, um, or with the, not patent machine, but the, the uh, wherever I got this from, fan extension replacer uh, kit. We're going to put an electric fan on it. And then we go in a step and we've got the harmonic damper. I got mine redone from uh, Damper Dudes. Uh, their price was 128 to do that, by the way. And, um, and then uh, the other stuff that goes on the rotating mass is I've got the crank gear and the new uh, oil, oil sleeve, a uh, pilot bushing, which goes into the, our brand new shiny aluminum Fidenza flywheel. The instructions for the flywheel say, do get it balanced. Um, with the flywheel comes the, uh, uh, and then I've got the bolts, the attachment from the flywheel to crank bolts. I cleaned these uh, uh, really well until uh, no more um, dirt came off on a paper towel. I've got the, uh, the uh, bolts that attach the pressure plate uh, to, the, um, to the flywheel that go from the pressure plate to the flywheel are different. Don't include the ones that came off of it if you're using the aluminum flywheel because aluminum requires a coarse thread rather than a fine thread bolt. So the, uh, so the bolts are different. Um, the bolts are different for the, so make sure you get the right bolts. In a so on the flywheel, balancing, uh, it says that it's manufactured exacting tolerance is very close to correct balance. However, we do recommend you balance the flywheel. Uh, please place close attention to any requirements of your particular engine, especially if it's an external balance configuration. Some engines do require match balancing of the replacement flywheel in the OE section prior. See the factory service manual for so on. Um, and the instructions also show Specific model instructions. My model is not listed on here, so uh, I guess I'm good to go. And then, uh, and then of course, the other rotating bit is the clutch disc. Now, reciprocating mass, which we'll talk, we have the uh, we have the rods, and we have the pistons and the rings. Now, I had a separate machine shop. Um, do those and we'll talk about it later as far as uh, balancing the rods cost me uh, fifty dollars and uh, The pistons he weighed them and balanced those and uh, measured them. We'll talk about that a little bit later You can see on the balancing you can see where he he ground um, Ground off of uh, of that side on this one and some of them are, are ground on this side uh, to, to balance these we'll talk about that later so those are all the bits that involved. I called the machine shop and said, which of this stuff do you need? And so uh, we found out that we only need the crankshaft, the flywheel, the new one, uh, the flywheel to crank bolts, the pressure plate, and the pressure plate to flywheel um, bolts. I'm also going to bring a copy of the instructions on the flywheel because it talks about heating up the flywheel in order to get it to fit right. And, uh, and and the machine shop guy said he never heard of that. However, it is in the um, in the instructions. It says you may have to heat it uh, to, to get it on there. So uh, we'll I'll include a copy of the instructions. Um, what else? Oh, in the crankshaft itself, which I don't have out here, uh, that needs to go. So um, uh, the pistons uh, were also balanced by the other machine shop. So do I need the main bearings? Of course not. Do I need the old flywheel? No. Um, do I need to remove the green from the flywheel which comes off with, with acetone before you install it? No, I don't need to do that. Uh, are you familiar with the Fidenza aluminum? May need to heat it. They weren't. I'll bring the instructions. Um, does the, the other question, does the pressure plate and flywheel get balanced together or separately? And, uh, and he said separately. The reason that's important is because I, I, if I ever change that uh, pressure plate or flywheel, uh, I don't want to have to have them both rebalanced again. So, prepping for the machine shop, I'm about ready to go. 
So in my research for engine balancing, I wanted to understand the process before I had it done. And I found a couple of uh, YouTube videos and websites that were helpful. The first one is on engine balancing itself. Uh, this one was from um, Engineering Explained. And uh, the title of this video was um, uh, how engine balancing works smooth running cars and he goes over three types of engine balancing behind his head he's talking about rotating assembly balance and then he talks about reciprocating balance and then he talks about firing balance and he goes uh, this particular website is on um, driving this particular YouTube is uh, Driving for Answers, Engine Balance, Inline uh, 3 versus 4 versus 5 versus 6. This helps a little bit more with theory around uh, how the uh, balancing works. So once you get the theory down, what does it actually look like to do it? I found this uh, on, on hotrod.com. Um, I found this article, Engine Balancing Tech, a Balance of Power. And he goes through and he starts explaining exactly what it looks like to to balance an engine uh, not only the the rotating the rotating balance of an engine uh, the reciprocating balance you'll see all the tools and how to how to uh, actually uh, achieve the balance on each of the components of the engine for these th um, for these different kinds of balancing and what what is done now when you read this article uh, you'll see these bob weights here that are put on the crankshaft to, to balance out the um, to balance out the crank. I was concerned because my machine shops did not tell me to bring the piston and the and the rings and the rods and all that in order to set the bob weight. And I'm going, well, wait a minute. How can you be balancing it if you're not putting the bob weight to counterbalance uh, the the weight on the crankshaft? Well, it turns out that inline sixes and fours are different than a V and they don't use bob weights. You wouldn't find that anywhere really in the theory. You have to dig into here. I found it referenced in uh, uh, in this uh, forum called uh, DSM Tuners on a thread called uh, Correct My Crankshaft Balancing. If you look deep into this, you find out that uh, this guy had, had the same question as far as, well, well hey, wait a minute. Um, what about my bob weights and how, how come they're not uh, asking for my machine shop's not asking for the bob weight and they go through and answer the question thoroughly as why a bob weight is not needed on an inline six so that's it for the theory and uh, i hope that's helpful to you it was to me to sum up what's said in these technical videos and in other places like um, say, uh, other resources like uh, Vizard's four-stroke performance, or Bell's, uh, excuse me, Graham Bell's uh, uh, four-stroke performance tuning, good resource. Why balance an engine? It eliminates vibration, which the engine can literally shake, but that also enables a smoother and faster revving of the engine and higher revving. You can hit higher, um, higher RPMs, it reduces wear on the bearings and other parts of, of the engine and results actually in more power. You can uh, dyno check uh, a, a well-balanced engine versus an unbalanced engine and see that, uh, that it results in more power. So that's a, a quick summary of why you should balance an engine. So I had the machine shop balance both my uh, rods and pistons, in other words, get the weight um, correct on them and uh, and so you can see um, I, I have a, a scale and I measured all of the rods and they're all at uh, 697 which is good and I measured all of the pistons and all of those were at 367 uh, so uh, that's really good I didn't measure the the um, the rings I had a uh, a deal made with the vendor I bought these from. Uh, it came with uh, came with Grant rings, uh, but I made a deal and in, in place with the Hastings rings, which are better. Didn't weigh these, 
But anyway, I'm happy with that. These were off by up to five grams, I think, and I didn't have a number as far as if any of these were off. The adjustment is made, I believe, um, I believe that that's what this area is for here, is to be able to grind a little bit here off of these if you need to take more weight off of these to balance them out. But they all measured within, uh, my machine has said a half a gram. So, uh, so we're good to go. Now the challenge in balancing rods is it's not just a matter of the overall weight, but it's a matter of the relative weight on either side. And uh, I've seen uh, balancing tools online where you mount this into onto a cylinder and, and you weigh, you know, the, weigh the end here and then you mount this one onto a cylinder on the end and weigh the end there and then you need to take off, you know, grind on this side and grind on that side accordingly. And I just didn't want to mess with all of that and uh, an experiment for the first time. The other thing I did, I decided not to do was, uh, was, um, go with max speeding rods and uh and my that was my misunderstanding there because i thought well if i'm going to change to an aluminum flywheel the weight the amount of difference of weight off of these isn't wouldn't be all that significant what i didn't know at that time was there's a difference between the rotating mass and the reciprocating mass and the reciprocating mass is the mass going up and down with the piston and the rotating mass is the mass going this way Flywheel deals with rotating mass. This is reciprocating mass. So I could have got the max speeding rods for three hundred and something dollars, but I already paid to have these all done, and uh, and I just decided, well, I'm just going to stick with these because I don't plan to rev this engine high anyway, and so uh, I think I'm not sure it would be worth the three hundred dollars to uh, to invest in the max speeding rods. If you're interested in the max speeding rods, go up on the internet to, uh, to eBay. And there's a vendor or two there that, that runs an occasional deal where you can get them really inexpensively. The other thing about the max speeding rods is I understand they're wider in this dimension, and that this part of the this part of the uh, rod will hit as, as as the rod comes up into the block. It'll hit it'll hit the block, and you have to grind U shape uh, you know grind some channels out of the block for that to clear. And I didn't want to start grinding on my block as well. So I'm back from the machine shop from the balancing. And uh, the news is, the good news is, it was uh, $170 to balance the three things, including tax. And uh, what the machine shop told me was that my pressure plate and my Fidenza flywheel were all perfectly balanced, no problem. What was imbalanced was my crankshaft. It was six grams heavy in the front, and they ground here and they ground here uh, to pull that six grams off. That was not the result I expected. I've been told and forums have said that the crank is the most likely thing to uh, be balanced, and the, and and the rest might be off, and especially that the uh, that that the pressure plate might be off. So this is not the result I expected, but I'm glad to have that done. That was the last thing I needed before I could start putting things back together. I normally don't stir the crank like this. I stir it up on end, but I just stir it this way for the video for a short period of time. So this channel is about uh, things that um, I, I don't have in the manual. Balancing a crankshaft is not, you know, how to do that in particular, what to be concerned about is not in the manual. Things I learn along the way that maybe uh, you'll find useful too. If you uh, like this, uh, or if you've got something out of this, if you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe to the channel. It encourages me to take the time to go ahead and do the videos. Thanks for watching.